Ni Kairi Balogun and Mujid Jamio. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. for staying with us. Let's begin on the sad narrative of incessant collapse buildings in Lagos. On Sunday, claiming lives following the incident, the state government ordered the arrests of the developer and building professionals working on the structure. The State Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development, Idris Salako, who accused the developer of violating planning laws and ignoring official warnings to halt the construction has resigned. Mujit, this is the first time we are going to see a kind of drastic action like this. And um, Lagos State has been in the news for the wrong reasons in terms of building collapse and all this, you know, um, building that's uh, especially along Lagos Island axis. What is wrong with the Ministry of Planning or what is wrong with the Lagos State Government in terms of, you know, building collapse? Why can't we bring this to an halt? Yeah, beyond, beyond the resignation of the uh, uh, commissioner, who I see as a scapegoat here now, um, I think the governor should beam his searchlight into the activities of officials of the ministry, the civil servants. Because for the commissioner who just resigned, quote and unquote, um, He's not, he's not a field officer here. Mm. Looking at that building, there was a no-stop work. I mean, a, there was a stop work order on dated February this year. But work still continued. And from my investigations, I also discovered that um, that building was meant to be a three-story. The approval was for three-story. Three and how it became a seven-story building, some people must answer those questions. But then we'll say the, the box stops on the commissioner's table. Now, the stop work order issued, pasted on that building, was not vacated, yet construction work was going on. I was looking at clips of um, uh, NEMA and the FEMA uh, on how this thing happened. They said the normal protocols that you should observe for a building of that nature, most of those protocols were not there. They should have a signpost stating the name of the consultants and the contractors, engineering, structural, electrical, Electrical. and so I mean on the the uh, the signpost. On the signpost. Those those things were not there. What we had there were just COVID uh, 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 stuff they, they, they mean that you should adhere to COVID rules. Are we still in COVID era? So, those are the issues. But now, to the uh, resignation of the commissioner, I just believe that um, <laughs> that is just an aside. But I think this is a good step, at least for once. A lot of them, I mean, we are still expecting uh, uh, reports or rather actions from the Colas building. And now, if you, if the commissioner the former commissioner now is saying that you told them to stop work and they refused to do that. What action did you take before this incident uh, happened? Beyond and the resignation of this, uh, the commissioner, Lagos State is known to be, uh, when you go around Lagos Island, a Butemeta, a lot of structure that, you know, the integrity needs to be questioned, you know, all around Lagos. and. In the last five years, we keep having this on and on and on. Well, it is unfortunate for two reasons. The governor himself is a is a professional in that a professional in that particular sector, so he's, he's supposed to be on top of stuff. And when this thing do happen, you wonder whether there's anybody in charge in such a way to make things pay. I think the resignation of the commissioner will serve as a notice down the line that nobody is immune to punishments. Because if you do not take the book that stops at your table, and then you pass it on to the next person, someone must pay. I grew up on Lagos Island. I was born on the island. And I can tell you there are buildings I know 50 years ago that are no longer there. There are now three, four-story buildings without toilets. There are no, no car parks. There are no even thoroughfare. They have to take uh, electronics. They have to have wire 
to take it up. Because yeah. there's no way the inlet will allow a fridge or a freezer to go to the buildings. And most of them are so tightly knit that you wonder if fire should start. Well, we have, we have no access to anywhere in those buildings. So Lagos is a dead man walking. As far, Lagos are like, I mean, as far as uh, those buildings are concerned. No, no. Like, like GKB said, you see some of these buildings uh, in Lagos Island, you are supposed to have a six meter setback that can take a vehicle between one between your building and even the fence. So which means from one building to the other building should be about 12 meters. But you discover that in between those two buildings, if you stretch your hand from the <laughs> third uh, floor of this particular building, you can be touching the person in the you other can, building. You can, you can pass something. You can pass something from this building to the other. The so they, they let loose on some of these protocols. So I think those officials of that ministry should cover their, 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 their faces in shame. And uh, I mean, uh, there, are, there are a lot of things. You see, building in Lekki and Lagos entirely requires a lot of expertise, and you need to do something that they call piling. You dip down, you dig deep into the ground and put some piling structure, and you discover that at every level, the Lagos State Mas Materials uh, Testing uh, agency. agency, they carry out all these tests that, I mean, that at times they lay it out, they call it biscuits, that's in their own parlance, for each floor. And you pay for all those tests. So you wonder when they noticed that there was a defect in this building as far back as February, why didn't they take the necessary action? Why, I mean, now we have, uh, I learned about six lives uh, well, have been lost. All the six people trapped in the building have been confirmed dead. They were, they, they, I mean, they, 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 their bodies were brought in. So we need to curtail uh, this kind of uh, 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 happenings, especially in Lagos. Of course, col building collapse is not only limited to Lagos. It's just last week, peculiar. just last week, it happened in Abuja. It's not only peculiar, but because people are trying to cut corners, you want to build a six-story, a seven-story building because you bought, you, you, they claim that it's, they bought the land at a very exorbitant rate, so they need to maximize. But even if you need to maximize, you must make sure that you do all the necessary checks and put, I mean, ensure that all the integrity tests are uh, uh, put in place. I, th I, th I think development has really diluted our sense of safety. On this same island, uh, when we were growing up, you cannot put a story building on a street designated for bungalows. It's against the law. They call it a building code. Yeah. But right now in Lagos, anything goes. Because that's even the Hong Kong that we are chasing after. And you see all these buildings. They have rules in terms of space, in terms mm -hmm. of where to go. I keep telling people, I say, look, Alan Avenue in Ikeja and the environs. We have buildings that are six stories, seven stories without any underground car park. Mm -hmm. We have hotels on Tony Street yeah. without car parks. And you wonder, you are taking this amount of load on a particular building, and one day the thing will come down. It's not rocket science. Most buildings are built to last 20 to 30 years yeah. before they are reinforced. That's what I said. It's, it is ironic that something like this is happening under a governor who is a professional in that particular area. So I think, OK, I have a caller. Olushola Julius is calling us from Ibadan. Thank you for joining us, Shalak. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uncle uh, the other person in the studio. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Now, for me, I'm happy to see that commissioner resigning because it's now a very good omen for us as a country that we are rising up. But what is so important is building collapse is now becoming too much in this part of the world. So our engineers and government as well should rise up and make sure that necessary actions are being put into place so that this thing will not occur again. It has been frequent and it's as well spelling doom on us as a country. It's not spelling good name for us. So please, government should rise up and get and do the needful for us as a country. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Lushala. The architects, the civil engineers, is um, a, a contract with the owner when the owner was not listening to him. So, Nobody should be above the law. If the owner, in this case, of, of course, which has been declared wanted, I think it should be made to, uh, to face the music. I mean, rather than uh, uh, claim 
uh, the head of uh, uh, the, the commission as uh, quote and unquote. So I think people should be punished for things like this, for these laxities, especially when lives are involved. I, 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 I mean, I'm happy that you said uh, the, the governor is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a severe. But you, but you know, the governor can be everywhere. That's why he has people who are supposed to be handing uh, uh, such uh, ministries. I mean, he's a town planner, the, the, com the commissioner I know, there. I know you. And since February, you had a no stop, I mean, a stop work uh, order on that building. It's still very uh, visible there, even with the. Uh, this, mm. So, Lagos need to go back to Some, what we want in the system. Somebody mm. must pay dearly for this. No, I agree. Especially the commissioner the... must resign because once you have three, four, five things happening under your watch, you are no longer in control of whatever. Because, like you said, if a work order was pasted in February and nothing was done, building was going on, and there are governor and there are minister, commissioners in the state, it's either they are above the law or they think that nothing will happen. Somebody All right. Will come, they can. Okay, moving on now. It appears the legal news is tightening more on the suspended head of the Police Intelligence Response Team, IRT, Abakiari. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLA, has filed fresh charges against Kiari, who is standing trial on cocaine-related charges alongside four members of his former units. In the fresh suit filed at the Federal High Court in Abuja, the NDLA is pressing 24 count charge against Kiari after accusing him of non disclosure of assets. 14 assets traced to the embattled police officer have been seized. 14 assets. Was it Deputy, was it? Um, Commissioner of Police. Is it DCP? Deputy Commissioner of Police. Yeah. 14 assets. Yes. Can you just give us a breakdown of those um, assets? I, I think the dilemma will probably be now is whether to allow himself to be. Uh, Right. Uh, not, to, not to be tried abroad uh, or to be extradited or face the music here because now when I looked at the chart sheets, he had 207 million naira in UBA. The salary of a deputy commissioner of police, I doubt if it could be more than 250,000 naira. It's not naira. It's 250,000 naira. So he has. 270 million naira in UBA, 17,000 euro in uh, Sterling Bank. That's not even much. Then he has some, as, I mean, in that level, as a, as a management level in the police, you feel the code of conduct uh, bureau where you declare your assets. But then they have discovered that in the, in the former field, he didn't give disclosure on some of these properties. Blue Fountain Estate in Abuja. Then he has an estate on Linda Shoka uh, Street in Asokoro. Asokoro. Asokoro in Abuja. Then he has a shopping mall. Uh, an estate in Abuja. An estate in Abuja. Now, that Asokoro is the oh, eyebrow this area. Oh, these are allegations. This, uh, yeah, we were just well, dissecting his names, it. His names are on these properties, I know. but he didn't disclose. Well, allegations, fine. Then he has a shopping mall and a polo playing ground. It's like somebody having a golf course. Or, or a stadium. <laughs> or a stadium. So, a very, has, a very rich cop. DCP, our, our, our star boy. I mean, when he, I, I recall when he apprehended the uh, uh, Evans, uh, the, uh, the, kidnapper. the kidnapper. Of course, we have his own date with history on uh, September 19. You see, we were all clapping for him. But this cocaine issue came, and from, uh, from leave, he went to execute <laughs> uh, a sting, uh, sting uh, operation, uh, which uh, was uh, busted by the NDLA. And I said kudos to the NDLA. I don't see this as wish hunt, because if you were to be wish hunt, I mean, I would say pr probably if you find uh, 10,000 naira in his account in uh, UBA or maybe $1,000, but $207 million and a shopping mall and an estate in Asokoro, I think he should explain to Nigerians where he got this. Uh... GKB, I think there's something wrong with our system fundamentally. 
Yeah. The, that is the system that we allow um, uh, Accountant General to have access to over 100 billion naira. Yes, you might say that it wasn't involved alone, but for that fact that that kind of thing can pass through that office, I will run a very... I, I, I don't understand the kind of system that we allow police officers to have access to this kind of money. Any, any office of any, do, mm. do you understand? And moving forward now, when we are looking at it, is there no way we can, there's a kind of check mechanism within the police? It was at the same time enriching himself. It's going to be a very long answer because I have to go back to history. Because you asked a very fundamental question. It was not always like this. But until maybe around 75, 76, people were very proud to be in the service because they know they will live to be 60 years and get their pension. When the British Alamo government came and sacked everybody, people in their 40s who had no other skill for civil service, this started to happen. People now realize that they have to take care of themselves because the system will not take care of them. That is the long story. The short one is that Yoruba said it's a leoro, Ulebi. People at a certain level should not be allowed to have assets beyond what they signed. Don't forget, there was a time a former of states had to explain where he got the money to buy a 504. That's when the Nigerian army or the police were still functioning. They have a place called SFU. Special for you. They are supposed to take care of things yeah. like this. Mm. They have an uh, internal police system. They are also arrest officers. Where they do. All these, of course, have been distorted within the system. The case of Akiyari is peculiar for two reasons. He was promoted very fast. So he had to jump certain levels. And so a lot of people just overlook things that they would do to other people coming to that rank. But like Majid said, allegation or not, there is no way you can explain this away salary of three million a year. Because if your salary is two fifty, that's three million a year. Uh, is it not eating? No, let's is say it not it spend, mm, let's, let's assume it does not spend the cup. You just keep it in the bank. Three million a year to get two hundred and seven. To get thirty million is ten years. <laughs> <laughs> to get sixty to get sixty million is twenty years. Twenty years. To get ninety million is so he has to work for mm. about fifty years. And it's another fifty. <laughs> Even if he starts working at from the from first the day he was born, <laughs> he started at two fifty per month. You see, not have made two hundred and seven million. That's the problem. And with that's us. aside from the shopping malls and uh, Asokoro. <laughs> no, even though I'm not in Asokoro. Because to get a plot of land in Asokoro, you and I know what it entails. How much did you buy your own there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, if, you, if, you, if, I, if I told you, I have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> now the 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 case here now is that. If he's going to stand trial here, I think it's better for him to stand trial here. That's the we have. Yeah, um, it's really a sad scenario, especially for a super cop like uh, Abakiari. I lost my respect for him uh, the day the NDLA played that tape, that which video. we just saw, that video we just saw now. I mean, somebody we held in high esteem. I know the number of times we have celebrated him here to the extent that the Lower chamber of uh, the National Assembly, the House of Representatives, mm. honored him, gave him a standing ovation mm. for doing a human job. Mm. I mean, he has mm. taken part in several uh, successful, operations. successful operations. So, unlike the one I mentioned earlier, but for him to be going down like this, I mean, calls to question um, our, uh, I mean, uh, generally, I mean, uh, for all of us as Nigerians, that a lot of things are wrong. Okay, I have Ola Wale from Ikorodu. They are not what they seem. Mm. Thank you for joining us, Wale. Hello, good afternoon, how are you? Good afternoon, Wale. Yeah, good afternoon. Ah, you know, my good. You Thank you very much. I just want to comment briefly on the... I just want to comment briefly on the first uh, topic you treated. Okay, go ahead, please. The, what is causing all this incessant collapse of building is one, impunity and corruption. Impunity in the sense that, oh, forget, how can somebody go and remove stop work order? 
They will say, I know the commissioner, I know Mr. Governor, I know the permanent secretary. We have the NIC connections. That's number one. Then, unless you solve the problem of corruption in Nigeria, I know. Mm. You are going nowhere. How can somebody have the air country? Look at the people that have died down. Is he going to wait there? It's not because uh, Samuel Sibono died in the Korean uh, disaster. We won't know. Why don't you remove the name of the, that contractor? Tell me every time Dick and Harry is now a developer. Hmm. He's not a developer. He was already a bricklayer. They are developers. God bless you. Thank you, Wale. Thank you, Wale. That's to, to, to be related. So, we are talking about this fight against um, corruption and um, in, even this must be extended to our security guys. And we've been hearing, if you remember, when this kidnapper, what's his name? That Evans, famous one. Uh, Evans, Evans was it. Yeah. He kept saying that, look, what was declared, was diff what was uh, taken from his home was declared from what was declared. And, but nobody listened to him because it's just a condemned thief <laughs> <laughs> as, as a well, time, for, or kidnapper. <laughs> let, him, let him go and prove that in mm -hmm. court. But, but yeah, but, but then, at that time, the sentiment <laughs> was that, oh, you wicked man, no. You can't be, you I, can't cannot, I cannot speak but for... At the same time, I cannot speak for other parts of the country. But I know at a point in this part of the country, if you come up with something that you cannot account for, your parents will be the first to shout. Like I, said, I cannot speak for other areas because I don't know them. But in this area that I, I know. But now, people have societies for mothers of uh, Yahoo Yahoo boys. And they have uniforms. In a state that I will not mention, a family without somebody in Italy, a female person in Italy, walking the house, as you know, that family is cost. Because you must have somebody somewhere doing the job, the oldest profession in the world. Or else people not respect you. So our values have gone down drastically. Nowadays, it's the ends justify the means. And unless we stop that, unless we start taking people for what they can offer, not the money that they have, we will not leave. Because the young boys are looking at us, and they are saying, what should I be like my dad? He works very hard. He has only one car. He has not left Nigeria before. But yet, I see my brother coming back. He has built, to, he has built everywhere in the world. Our value system has been distorted. And we have to go back to basic. If we don't do that, no matter the amount of preaching that we do here, we not change the reality of that reality. Get rich quick uh, syndrome. Yeah, it's not. Uh, but when you, uh, we still talk about very very honest officers, we still celebrate sure. them every day. And sure. um, Abakari was meant to be a role model, somebody that uh, uh, would, would somebody that to, broke the mold. Yeah, yeah. So people are look up to. It's I want to very, be very painful. Very painful. Very that, painful. That um, then daily had to do this job because we have this kind of feeling that the police. Um, the, the hierarchy. hierarchy. Yeah, they needed that hard evidence to be able to nail him. I mean, for, for Nigerians to believe, because there is no way they could have uh, told us that story without that video evidence. No, even me, I won't believe it. Yeah. That you know, Abakari is like a saint to all of us. But they came out with that. And so I said, after that video, they, they now started stumbling into things. What are things? Yeah, because uh, the police authorities actually uh, handed him over to the EFCC. I mean, I think it's the FCC that is not uh, 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 prosecuting him with the NDLEA. So a lot of uh, things have been unraveled, and I think more are still coming, uh, because, uh, like I said, allegedly, he had some other things that are hidden under other... Uh, these are the ones that can uh, be proven. This one, these are the ones that are traced directly to his name. Even within the EFCC, we've had assets, you know, being relooted and so everything. That one, they, so how can this be They are notorious for things of that. That one happens uh, mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Yeah. Like, like, like uh, GKB said, our values have been eroded, and uh, and it, right from the from the home, where some parents even encourage their uh, wards to go uh, to sit crime. for exams at uh, uh, special special centers, special special centers. centers so to say. I mean. Um, the other day, a parent called me. I've been looking for my daughter's phone. That he found it uh, with his son. That said, no, I didn't buy this phone for you. I I, I requested to meet that man, and I I mean, today we, are, we, we we've been very good friends. That yeah. he he called me. He said, he saw, he saw my phone, my name, on that phone. And I've been asking my daughter, where did you, where is your phone? Said she couldn't uh, find it. So the man called me. 
you can imagine. But another parent would have said, ah, this is a bonus for my, <laughs> for my, for my son. Mm. But he called and he punished the, 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 the son for that. Mm. So this kind, these are the kind of values that we should uh, uh, preach as parents. And that's why we are having these serious issues on our hands that people want to get rich quick. Okay, we'll take this break. When we come back, we'll talk more. I will talk about Khan and 2023 general elections. The federal government, through the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, announces the availability of COVID-19 and childhood vaccines nationwide. With the disturbing increase in reported cases of COVID-19 infections across Nigeria, protect yourself and loved ones from the harmful virus by getting vaccinated. Visit the nearest public or private health facility and mass vaccination sites today to receive the first, second or booster doses of COVID-19 vaccines. COVID-19 vaccines are given to persons 18 years and above, including pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers, while childhood vaccines are given to children from birth to five years for protection against polio, hepatitis, yellow fever, measles, meningitis, and other vaccines-preventable diseases. All vaccines are free, safe, and effective. For inquiries, visit www.nphcda.gov.ng or call 0700-220-1122. This message is from NPHCDA in partnership with the Center for Democracy and Development, CDD, with support from MacArthur Foundation. Showing up in style inspires great confidence. IBM G5T appeals to class. Time is of the essence. With IBM Kappa, business and meetings are always on the go. Fun time with the family. Thank you to IBM Kinga. IBM Car is always still in the show. Isn't she beautiful? Influence defines a great leader. IBM Seriki is Africa's commute king. Strong, reliable, and durable. With the concept of regionalization, Innocent Vehicle is committed to satisfying its customers with producing their everyday dream cars. IBM. Pride of African roots. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, this is your favorite news and current affairs program on TV, Journalist Hangout. And still have Mojid Jamiu and Gani Kaidi Balogun. That the race to the 2023 elections is generating tribal and religious acrimony is not in doubt. Ahead of the elections, the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, Daniel Oko, has urged Christians, leaders, and churches across the country to be non-partisan in election matters. He also urged Nigerians to be properly guided in making the right decision in the next presidential election. This can't just come back from, <laughs> because uh, the, press, the, the, press the, the impression I got about uh, this association when this political party, the APC, let me say, when they were choosing their presidential, vice presidential candidates, and I was like, there are other political parties running this election. That's, it's just a matter of choice. But the way they kept going on and on, and some elements within the Northern Christian Association of Nigeria, you know them, but some politicians, they seem to be using it for like this. But the president is going neutral now. Yeah, I, I, I think I must commend uh, the new uh, Khan uh, president. I mean, he's um, trying to say that uh, we should, mo well, uh, I think it's Majek Fachek that uh, sang uh, this song that religion is politics, and politics is religion. I mean, it's, uh, politics is everywhere, even inside the religion. Now, he's trying to say that, come, let's keep an open heart. Uh, Muslim, Muslim, Christian, 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 Muslim, Muslim, win whatever. They, we, Christians should just worship God and pray for the best leader to emerge and not, don't, don't bring religion into politics. And mind you, if you look at the Electoral Act, Section 26, states clearly that you must not campaign on the basis of religion. 
you can't campaign on the, it is there, and there is a penalty. So it's not only for Khan, even for, uh, for the uh, other, uh, for, uh, is for uh, uh, the Islamic, uh, 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 for Muslim followers, and also for uh, the Orthodox followers. You, can, you, you are not supposed to campaign based on religion. Campaigns are supposed to be issue-based. So you don't go on the altar and say, don't vote for a Christian if you are a Muslim, or don't vote for a, a, a Muslim if you are a Christian. So I think it is wrong, and I think I commend the camp president for coming out clear with this. Probably somebody has drawn their attention to this provision of the new electoral act that stipulates that you cannot campaign based on religion. I mean, some, uh, like, some, so, sorry, sorry. Ayo, like, like, like you said, we have several political parties that people can choose from. If you don't want to vote for a, uh, Muslim, a, a Muslim, Muslim ticket, same faith ticket. Uh, same faith ticket, then there are other options. There is the obedience uh, group, there is the Shawore uh, group there, there is even the ADC that is fighting over uh, their uh, presidential uh, candidate yeah. now. Uh, so there is also uh, the articulated uh, group. So there are a lot of options. So why uh, the, fixation. the fixation on uh, 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 the same faith? Uh, uh, a lot of people will say because uh, maybe it's the, um, the, of this party is the ruling party and the Nigerians are concerned that the ruling party, you know, might just be the, uh, you know, the party to watch when it comes to things like this. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that even some church leaders are even making their churches like a campaign ground. We saw this in 2015. We saw this in 20, yeah, 2015. We saw much of this in 2015. We, and we saw it in Russia. And something like, you know, it's not playing out again where a candidate will go to churches and, you know, they will embrace him and everything. And Well, yeah, like Moji said, we have to face the reality that you have a divided nation, religious-wise. And uh, I'm sure the man just realized that this is a slippery slope to go down because there is no end. It will not take us anywhere. It will not take us anywhere because but if you do this, other people will start doing the same thing. And then why would that end up? That means the legitimacy of whoever wins will not be called into question. Meanwhile, the law was very clear that religion is not an issue when it comes to elections. You talk about representation based on where you come from and what you represent, not about religion. So every, every electoral circle, people bring this thing in, but Nigerians have been able so far to keep it at bay. Whether I'll be able to do it much longer, I cannot say. Because the danger is real. Imagine this scenario. That's part all these things that was done by Khan and some church leaders. Let's imagine that the safe way tickets wins. What happens? Where would they stand? How would they face the president that emerged from that safe ticket? What would they tell the person that they were doing? Would they tell him uh, that was just campaign now? You've won now. Let's be careful about what we do with religion. Because, like I said, it's a slippery slope. Nobody can tell you where you can get off. But, but the but Christian Association of Nigeria, they also have a kind of right to protect their interests in whoever. Be, you know, become the leader of this country. Def, def, definitely, they should. I think uh, by by doing this, they are saying, followers of our faith, you have that latitude to vote for any candidate of your choice. I've had a deep conversation with a lot of Christian friends, and they are saying that they would vote on the integrity and merit of uh, any of the candidates, but not. They are not going to vote based on religion, but their own is too good. I mean, you don't go to church to preach uh, politics. You go to church to preach salvation, salvation, mm -hmm. good deeds. Good deed, I believe, is more important than anything uh, that is written in any of the books. Your goodness or others is the best. And if you, are, if you have good intention towards your uh, fellow, fellow human, human being, mm -hmm. that is greater than any religion. In fact, that is religion itself. Why do you think the politics is so heated when it comes to religion? At a point in time, it was, in 1993, it was never a big consideration. It was. Actually, it was a big consideration in 1993. The only thing that diluted it was the fact that, as of that time in our history, a southerner 
was looking likely to win. So a lot of people put aside the religious sentiments to focus on that. Because you know that the consumers of that time will give the advantage to somebody from another part. But Adola was the first person that ticked all the boxes that can win. So a lot of people now said, okay, fine. For the basis of this alone, let's leave the fact that it's a Muslim Muslim ticket and focus on this. Why it's more rampant now, as we are aware, is that our security infrastructure, it's only the appointments of this administration, have created the impression that some people are more capable to run our security apparatus than others. And that, to me, is the key element in what is playing out today. It was not like this in 2015, because there was still a balance. But since 2015, it has tilted to one side, and people are looking out for what they consider to be their own people, which, to me, is irrelevant. Because, like Bob Mali said, when the rain falls, falls on every man's man. Yeah. Now See, we are divided along religion and ethnic line now. It's a, it's a big problem that was, you know, not as pronounced as this. I, like I say, once again, I'll commend the camp president for making this uh, statement and for coming out with this advice. Now, now must we base our issues on religion? The answer is no. Most of the countries that are doing well all over the world, are they, are they, are they religious countries? <laughs> no, that's the question. China, they, 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 or America, are they being ruled based on religion? Are they, I mean... Even those who are ruled with theology. Uh, yes. Uh, Dubai, UAE. UAE, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. Egypt. Are they not doing better than we are doing? That is it. So are, we doing, that are, are, we, are, we, are we are we doing better as I mean as quote and unquote, as a religious uh, nation, a, 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 a country that is being run based on religious sentiments? As it where has it taken us? Right. Because we need somebody who has the wherewithal, the temerity, the, uh, the, the, the the all it takes to to, to take us out of this uh, quagmire that we have found ourselves e economically. Hmm. I have Uche. Thank you for staying with us, Uche. From yeah, really, uh, yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, good evening, um, the panelists. Um, this is Richard. I'm calling from uh, Adokuta. Okay, go ahead, Richard. Um, you agree with me that uh, no matter how we try to pretend about religion, religion is a part of politics as far as Nigeria is concerned, and not only, or not only in Nigeria, in other other parts of the world. So you cannot pretend about it. There's no way you will remove politics from religion. They are interwoven. Now, let me give you the, uh, our brother, uh, Jagaban, as an example. Hello, Jay. What happened? Okay. So, no, well, to answer him, we are not saying that religion is not interwined in our culture. And that is not part of the fabric that makes us as What we are saying is that this is a democracy and you have choices. It doesn't have to be that particular ticket you don't like. No need to make a tea, a tea or coffee out of it. If you don't like it, keep it to yourself. Then pick the one that fits your own model of what you think should be those who rule Nigeria. There are 16 options. 16. Not south, south, north, not east, not west. Everybody is represented. I don't, think, I don't think there is a particular zone that is, does not have a presidential candidate as you speak. So I don't understand. It's a democracy. You have only one vote. If your church believes that you must vote for Mr. Head, go ahead. But remember that if you create an impression that is either your way or the highway, and you don't win, you'll be responsible for whatever uh, depression comes upon your members. Majid, the final word is this. Um, I think we should encourage a campaign that is devoid of uh, religious and uh, ethnic sentiments. I know that in as much as we try to run away from it, these are critical issues, but I think we should play it down just like Khan is doing. And I expect uh, our Muslim brothers to, to also uh, preach that uh, to their followers at uh, Juma services. Uh, on Fridays. And where's, where's we Murik? Should. Murik has the Murik man has been silent. <laughs> Murik will come soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, professor. Yes, our friend in the <laughs> 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 Like a stubborn tree stump, 
the remnant of Boko Haram insurgents are surging to terrorize people in the northeast. Suspected Boko Haram terrorists have killed a chief imam and three other worshippers when they attacked Gilde community in Askirauba, local government area of Brno states. The terrorists, numbering about 20, launched the attack by opening fire on worshippers at the community mosque in the community. Meanwhile, security operatives in Ondo states are on the trail of some bandits who kidnapped 32 persons in the coastal bus who were returning from a funeral ceremony in Benin City in Edo State. Okay, let's start with let's start with this um, Boko Haram insurgent. Do, over the weekend, um, we were told that the Nigerian security, um, you know, operatives were able to score some big points along Borno State. So, is this in any way a kind of setback? Yeah, um, I read this story of uh, the uh, uh, kidnap of the deputy imam in that uh, mosque and uh, in Bono State on a Friday and some other worshippers. I mean, this, the guys, the bandits uh, came in pretending to be uh, worshippers too. So that's why I said... Um, now, what happened in Owa in Ondo State, it's not Muslim versus Christian. Now, bandits going into a mosque, this is not the first time that it's happening. Mm. Bandits are bandits, they are bad, they are condemnable. So we should not put religion to them. Yeah, Boko Haram start, started with uh, Book is Haram, but then, now we are beginning to see that it, it is a condemnable act that rampage they are rampaging against Muslims and Christians. They are, they are rampant against good people. That is, that is the way I see it. So um, they went away with the, um, the deputy uh, imam and uh, some uh, worshippers during Jumat on a Friday. What, what, which act could be more desp despicable, uh, despicable than that? Just like what happened in uh, or what? I mean, they were firing sporadically into the air, and uh, <coughs> five people were scampering for safety. They were able to grab uh, their um, hostages and let with them. So uh, they launched these attacks once in a while at a point when we are trying to celebrate that these characters have been decimated. Then there's a resurgence. They come into town. Uh, pick people, especially when we are about uh, to lure our uh, guards. I mean, they come in and uh, perpetrate uh, these uh, evil acts. But I think the Nigerian security operatives are doing their best. But then until we are able to get to the end of this matter, I don't think their best will be good enough because they are being paid with taxpayers' money to protect, uh, to protect lives and property. And in a situation where it becomes difficult for us to be able to uh, go to our places of worship, uh, to observe our prayers on Fridays and Sundays, then it's becoming a really, really sad situation. Nikki, not taking anything from the Nigerian army, the, the, um, our military, that they keep neutralizing these people, but these people, they keep um, coming back and in, in numbers and they keep attacking our people and I begin to look at their recruitment drive. I don't know, maybe it's out of poverty or out of the situation in the country that they keep, you know, their numerical strength keeps increasing. I think we've discussed this here before. In the absence of government, somebody must fill that role. And most of the time it is these people in the area. But to be naive on our part, to just accept that because we are, our armed forces are dealing decisively with those people that they will simply go into the night. That's not possible. They are still going to do stuff like this. They are still going to come back once in a while. It's like, uh, like you say, Yoruba, cut off the head of a fowl. It will take a while for him to stop joking. So don't assume that because you cut off their head that they will stop doing this. Mm -hmm. This will continue, maybe not at the scale that we were witnessing a couple of years ago, but once in a while, because they are not only doing it for their own survivor, they also do need to tell their sponsors that they are still active. Yeah. Because monies are coming from all over the world to 
to make sure that this thing does not go. So they must do this once in a while. So that was bringing money from all those cells. We say, yeah, our money is now being well spent. So we should expect this to happen. It's going to be rare, but that's going to go away. That's not true. It will be inhibiting our part to assume that. Now looking at on, on those states, we that's like in the last six months now, on those states has been in the news for well, ter 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 well this terrorist attacks and. I'm not too comfortable with the, the way they've been operating along that um, um, area, especially on the north, from what happened in World War II. Ondo is really becoming very worrisome. And uh, to think that Ondo State has one of the most efficient Amotekun. Uh, Can that be the reason? No, I mean, that's why I'm, I'm trying to uh, rationalize. Uh, to think aloud have now. They have been proactive. Yes, they are motoring in Nondo. In fact, la last weekend they went on an operation where they went into some of these forests to try and fish out some of these uh, 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 characters. But this happened. Thirty-two uh, 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 people coming from uh, Edo State. From coming from Edo State. So I think um, the. Governor is doing Arakuni, uh, is doing his best, but I think he should do more uh, by empowering the Amotekun uh, uh, operatives more, and also I think for the, them. He, he, um, he has to signed the bill in the state of our House of Assembly so that they can be carrying arms properly arms, now. Yes, but I think what they were carrying before are just uh, uh, the dingons. Uh, the dingons and. Now, you know, they work in concerts with the, uh, police. the police and also the local hunters. And I think that has been very effective. And I think we must, I mean, they, 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 when I travel on that axis quite a lot, it's especially really on my way yeah. to uh, Ikiti, and I see a lot of presence of Amotekun uh, vehicles and their operatives on the roads, almost like every 5, 5, 10, 10 kilometers. You see them lined up on that uh, route. In conjunction well with, uh, yeah, well kitted with uh, security. I mean, with uh, the army mm -hmm. and the police. So, this I think these are just localized uh, uh, cases uh, that we uh, that we see. Unlike, like it, it used to be in the past, where uh, on a weekly basis you hear things like this happening. I think the last uh, kidnap uh, case we had was quite a long time ago in uh, on those days. So. Right. So we cannot run away that there will be occasions like this. Yes, no, like there will be no, like be no need for police force. Do we need a foreign help to no. help us in combating banditry, these terrorists? No, I think uh, across the country. Uh, I think right now the military are doing an excellent job, but these are entrenched menace. They didn't start yesterday. Don't forget Boko Haram, that now transported to banditry, has been with us over ten years. So it's not going to go away immediately. Other elements coming into play. Really, Ondo is uh, the that. So a lot of I'm not profiling anybody. I'm just saying that what we seem to have is that people moving down south, really from that Okene uh, Yagba area, which is also very notorious for kidnapping, and now using Ondo states as a strike point to go back to where they come from. Now, you know they actually share the Ondo, Ondo shares a border with uh, Kogi and uh, and even the Kiti. Now. We discover that those that have been those those that were arrested in connection with their war attack were actually most of them were from Kogi. I mean, we were thinking that they are actually Boko Haram elements, but no. I mean, and so a lot of local elements are coming to play. A lot of local elements because, especially, they see kidnapping as being very lucrative. So, those who have been engaged in uh, armed robbery and uh, some other tedious tax are now going to kidnapping because they see it as more lucrative. So, we need to break the ranks and we need more of intelligence gathering to be able to stop uh, uh, some of these uh, 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 vices because um, I think that's the Amoktepun uh, commander uh, they are uh, showing that there's some so of they are doing the an Yes, they are actually working but I think they need to do more uh, and I know they have been working what with What they the need is more, more money. Because I wanted to ask yes. that, do they have, look at, do they have what it takes to combat these uh, bandits? We have visuals of bandits. We see them with RPG. We see them with anti-aircraft um, guns. Uh, let's see what we have to the law. 
that will empower them to carry the AK-49, SPGs, and all that. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. they work in conjunction with uh, the, the police, police and, and the, the army. army. So and the civil authority, uh, civil, and the civil defense. Defense. Okay, okay, look at the guns. Yes. Look at the yeah, guns. Those, those are pump action. Uh, pump action. Uh, uh, this is a step yeah. up. Yeah. So what they were doing when they first yeah, they started with uh, dengons. dengons. Now they have uh, moved this to. Is a step up. Um, but you agree with me that the, the bandits that we've been seeing, the terrorists that we've seen... But that's what I said, let us wait for What's, the law. No. Let's see kind of equipment that... That is in on those states. <laughs> in other states, that even the police, they are not even able to confront these people. Um, they still even kill militaries. See, yeah, uh, the Boko Haram elements, you know, they don't obey any... Uh, state laws. And apart from state laws. And... and war conventions, they are not guided by any international convention. So they go all out with whatever. They can fight with acid. Mm -hmm. So they take, I mean, they, they use whatever is at their disposal. You know, they are on a mission to kill. So whichever way they do it, but for those who protect, they have some measured mm -hmm. uh, steps that they must take. They have to be careful. Uh, I mean, you can't compare the kind of uh, weapons carried by these uh, Boko Haram elements to what we have. It is now that we are getting uh, the area power. Okay, I have to, this caller. Undu is calling us from Karu Nasara State. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Mr. Ayo. Go ahead, please. Yes, I'm Mr. Moji. Good evening, sir. And uh, my other father there. Yes, good evening. Okay, good evening. Undu, go ahead. Undu, I'm calling from Karaka uh, government. Yes, that's our state. Uh, Mr. Amoji, to talk about uh, this issue of uh, insecurity, uh, security agencies, so, uh, you know, they are doing their best, but they should see it to an end. I, you know, I want to ask you, know, Amoji, are you sure? Because we Nigerians are beginning to be scared. Are we ever going to come to the end of this? Are we ever going to see the end of Boko Haram and bandits? Because the whole thing is like the government and the security agencies, they are overstretched. And, uh, you know, having said that, the idea of police in far away where he is right now, when he was making a speech, he said to the election that the police are going to make sure that the security will be in place for everybody to vote. But must we, you know, but must we wait for election to come, just like Jonathan postponed that, you know, election, and push those, uh, you, know, uh, you, uh, you know, bandits forward? Our time is fast, friend, Undu. Would you respond quickly? Yeah, what he's trying to say is that, what the uh, police IG is saying is that they will provide security for everybody, not just in terms of election, but mm. every, uh, during that period, yeah. For the end of Boko Haram, yeah, we, pray, we all pray to see the end of uh, Boko Haram. Honestly, uh, from 2009. Yeah, but you see, everywhere in the world, we have all these terrorists. You don't get them away. It's like, if you have a, if you have a, a wound, it must leave a scar. So at times, there will be some localized uh, 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 cases that, like we see. But I can tell you that our guys are doing their best. Mm. We should encourage them to do more. I want to thank you for your contribution. Yes, Mujit Jami, thank you for your contribution. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11 and join us every Sunday for Journalist Hangout on Sunday between 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodele Uzuba. See you tomorrow. is a paid presentation by ShopX TV. Are your kitchen drawers starting to look like a bad garage sale? Steamers, rice cookers, roasters, slow cookers, and just how many pots and pans does one kitchen really need? And every time you cook, cleanup's a disaster. Scraping, scrubbing, what a chore. What if you could replace all this with one single non-stick pan? And what if